They struggle to adapt to patches. In their own words, they were too slow to figure out what works. That may be the case today. It is 4.13. Despite the fact that they've had to, they've had the chance to watch the quarterfinals, they've not competed on the stage at this level on this patch. Meanwhile, SK have, of course, put their money where their mouth is. 3-0 in Millennium, and now 1-1 with Alliance. Nidalee, Aatrox, and Cogmore taken out by Alliance. A lot of focus on Freddy. We talked about how he was bullying out Wicked, and that seems to be the cause. Maokai left open. What will the reaction be? Cassid in Twisted Fate, and I was about to say Nif, but <laughs> it's uh, Nami banned out. Wow, okay, first pick is going to be Ari. That means it is up to SK whether they want to use Maokai and, of course, steal away Tristana or something different. Yeah, of course, the, the Alistair well. the yeah. Alistair's still up. There's Braum still up if they also want to try counter pick, you know, take that away from Nif. Um, there's a number of options available to SK. The question is, what, what type of comp does Alliance want to run? In the previous game, I was looking at the team fights and saying, Maybe it's team fight oriented, but with all the long range single target CC, they were like looking for a long range pick comp more than anything with Maokai to fall back as defense. Whereas SK's comp in the previous game was like an assassin in your face comp. Three champions jumping in, trying to kill you after some poke has gone down. So the priority picks are off the table. Tabs, is he gonna run a hyper carry? He did Twitch in game one, he did Corky game two. I guess you can call Twitch maybe a hyper carry with his ultimates on. But it's not a Corky or a Tristano or a Vayne in, in, in that regard. We'll see whether the Stealth Rat works for Candy Panda. Whether he's able to find those targets like the Tabs was in game one. Shook takes away Karzix from Sven and Of course, everything open for him. But Swain locked in. And this has to be the top lane for Wicked. We saw yeah. Soaz playing it earlier on. Of course, we saw Vizzy Chachi, the man that first brought it out for the Unicorns of Love back last week, and it worked wonders, but of course, he got himself a double kill early on. Yeah, Swain in the top lane, and when Soez ran it, he didn't need the snowball to win. Um, the way Fnatic used Swain was more for his slow from Decrepify and the root of Never Move. Mm. And yes... Zoning if, people out. Exactly, yeah. exactly. If you jump into a Swain, he's gonna sustain through team fights. but it was more about the CC, it was more about the zone control, and that very big threat that he gives you on the front line. So we'll see how Wicked's gonna handle it. I do wanna just comment on the Ari pick though, because I feel like that is a Froggen saying, if we need to win this game, I can win it by blowing someone up. I'm confident, I'm capable. You know, like, I feel like that's a, that's a player saying, give me the champion, I will make this work, I will create the opportunities that we need if we're in, in a desperate situation, because that is a very, very risky move. The other first picks haven't worked out. Well, Oriana's been banned out in the first two games and has been picked up by Jezzes this time around. Candy Panda, meanwhile, locks in Morgana for Enray for the first time we're going to see him on it in this best of five. Now, we'll see if it works out. Ooh, I mean, finally. For the, for the, for the Oriana, you're going to have that stealth engage. Rengar's up as well. So if SK really wanted to go for like a super sneaky stealthy pick comp, they could lock Rengar in and use the ball delivery system on multiple targets. And then again, they've got some versatility as well. You know, you've got the engage from Morgana and Maokai, or you, they can be used to appeal or disengage. It just depends which jungler Svenskeren wants to run. Uh, you have been talking about Thresh all day long. Nef finally gets his hands on it. And if he can do the same thing that uh, uh, Vander did in the previous series, might be a good way to help Alliance get those picks. Well, final picks, as you mentioned, Tristana and Thresh locked in there. Also, Evelyn for Svenskeren. And to me, this game has 50 minutes written all over it, but not in a bad way, not in a fantastic way. These are two strong team fighting compositions. Yeah, they can do that, and they can also find picks very well. Yes, well, we've you know, already seen Frog and doing that. Exactly. You know, you, you've got very similar situations where supports can set stuff up, mid laners can set stuff up, junglers can get aggressive. But the, I think the crux of X, SK Gaming's team composition is going to be how the, the, the shockwave interacts with the stealth champions or the tree. When Evelyn or Maokai engage, how many champions can they hit together? How many can they group up? On the Alliance side, it's going to be much more dependent on how many can Shook or Froggen kill. They want to get some poke down, zone them away, and then let them finish it up. Well, Tebsk 
get fed out this time, or yep. can the Panda find himself some targets? Which team do you think has come out ahead in the picks and bans with the edge going to who? That's the question. Is it Alliance or is it SK win? Tweet hashtag SL Alliance win or hashtag SK win. It's pretty simple. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. You just got to tweet it to at LO Esports. That's the key. That's the main part. It's pretty hard, I'm not going to lie. Um, and I think... <laughs> it, honestly, I think this has five games written all over it. It's looking that way. It's definitely looking mm. that way. One of the things that does play into Alliance's favor is the resets. Mm. Because they've got Tristana, because they've got Kha'Zix, once they have, once Kha'Zix has that evolved wings, the moment Froggen finds a target, if he goes, if he goes like hard carry mode and blows somebody up, all of a sudden Tabs and Shook can re-engage and keep chasing. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game three, underway, all square at one apiece. Alliance take game one, while SK Gaming react strongly in game two and take it honestly, dominantly. The question is, can they do the same? Interesting compositions across all lanes for me in this game. We're going to see whether we get some 2v2s, whether they try and change things up. There's not been too much shenanigans in the level one, but right now, it seems that both teams are looking to go red. Yeah, very deep wards. It looks like Alliance are going to do the same, the same tri-bush move that um, I think they did in game one, if memory shows, when they were blue side. Went in very, very deep, got some very good wards down, and looked for the lane setup. That was the same game where Alliance tower dove and picked up the, the first blood onto Freddy. A um, little SEC this time around. Well, not so much. If they, if they go never move in death sentence, it can obviously work out. But yeah, mirror start from game one for both of these squads. And I, I do still feel uh, Sven, his flanks and his engages will be very, very important because if Alliance get the chance to reset, they can simply reposition and you've, you don't have a lot of mobility on SK's side. SK's a little bit more reliant on finding the right fight in the right location, whereas Alliance can uh, be a little more risky thanks to their composition. Well, death sentence thrown out from Nif there and of course that ward spotted out the whole of Alliance moving around there. So SK got the information they required and that is why they're sticking around. They know that Alliance have moved out of the jungle and they're going to get the red. Look at the red area though. Tabs and Nif, they are going to pass by. They ward out the red. Svenskeren is still waiting in this side. He's going to get spotted. He's going to run. Yeah, he's going to be in trouble. That's actually very smart from Alliance. If they can steal a buff, we'll see how Shook decides to go for the invade. Early teleport from Freddy. Puts himself in a position to go for the 2v1. And Candy Panda is now moving himself to the top lane. So losing a little bit of CS time. You can see Tabs and Nif already in lane, starting to get some CS and starting to pull a little bit ahead. So it's SK that volunteer themselves to go 2v1 in this one. That means Wicked, who is on Swain, the first time we've seen him on that, is in a risky position already. Will he get caught out with the dark point? He's going to have to sidestep this one. n -rate is going to get that down. He has to flash already. Very early flash burned out. Yeah, very, very strong start to the lane already. And it's, it's SK that initiated the lane swap. Freddy instantly teleported once he's seen Swain. So maybe that sort of Swain is a hard counter to Maokai has got a bit of weight to it. You can see Alliance instantly looking for the 2v2 as well. They are going to take a swing past Jez's. Charm or Death Sentence, can it connect? It does! Oh, the Death Sentence does come through, and the Charm, that could have been a dead Jez's. Good flash, and that opens up an opportunity for Shook this time to take a pay a visit in the mid lane. Yeah, both, both sides being down a summoner spell. Who can make the best use of it? This is a double buff Sven Skeren. He's going to look for Nif and Tabs. Dark Binding from Enrated, it has to connect. Let's see if they can make it. There goes Candy. The Candy can panda. Could well be locking in towards him. Tabs taking all zones low. And it will be first blood for Candy. Just very well played. Enrated moves himself in. Candy panda surprises the two of them thanks to Ambush. And early first blood. So the lane swaps. Uh, not necessarily working out the way SK wanted it. Because remember, they were looking for 2v1. But they managed to make the best of the bad situation. And Svenska and Gangs getting the team first blood. So all credit to him. So, for the first time, Wicked managed to get the counter into this lane matchup, and it's working. Flash, Shook goes straight in towards it, taps, Jez has gone out, that's going to be him going down, Froggen gets that, good charm, everything worked. Yeah, Froggen and Shook both flashing in to secure that one. Knowing Jez's didn't have flash from the earlier charm that connected, 
and Frog is still got his Ignite. So if, <laughs> if, if Alliance are going to win this, I, I think Frog is looking to put them in his backpack. He's really looking to step up his game. Freddy actually surviving pretty well. Wicked took some turret hits there that he really wasn't looking forward to. Yeah, low mana though for Freddy. We'll see if he's able to sustain and stick around a bit longer. Svensko and double both top looking towards Niff and Tabs once again. Wants to see if he can get a bite out of that AD carry. Niff throwing the death sentence to make sure he gets the last hit. Okay. Yeah, just to get the CS, you know, every CS that he can. Tabs and the fling very, very defensively. No flash on Niff. And you see how far back they are from the lane. Already 10 CS down. They do not want to run the risk. And it's actually very difficult with uh, Tristana in that setup because of the fact that she's naturally going to push the wave. So that sort of plays into SK's favor if they can control the tempo of the lane. But obviously this is a massive wave building up. So Tab should be able to secure a bunch of those under his tower. Well, Froggen went back. Got himself the Double Doran's boots and an amp tome. Meanwhile, Double Doran's were picked up by Jezzers, of course, because he was caught out. First Blood helping out for Froggen. Bottom wave, uh, well, top wave, I guess you should say, duo wave, whichever they're in, is going to get cleared out. Big advantage for Candy Panda, of course, because Tabs was forced away. He would gain some of that back as Candy steps back, and it's going to be a switch once again. They really want to put Wicked on the back foot down in this bottom lane. Yeah, I also think Freddy just really doesn't want to be in this lane uh, setup. Spencer has come around, they're jumping on Wicked. No flash. Oh, he's going to walk away. He's got never move available. Freddy had no mana either. Didn't really. bother going for it. Yeah, Freddy, Freddy was very, very low on mana. Mm. Um, actually did have enough for, for at least I think they wanted the well, route. He, he didn't want to do a Twisted Advance because Wicked actually didn't have Flash. Yeah, before. exactly. Couldn't draw him into yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure. It was, it was sure. playing it very safe. Anyways, it set them up. They've now got the support of the AD carry Ready? and oh. support on the Dragon. And this Dragon is hitting very, very hard. Um, Froggen does have Spirit Rush available. This could get risky if Froggen goes aggressive. Yeah, they absolutely should go aggressive because Freddy and Svensko are low. Five members of SK moving in though. Shook caught out, Charm does land. They do manage to get the damage down, but Froggen has to run away as Shook got capitalized and taken down. It does leave this top lane open. They didn't get the Dragon. They may lose the tower. It looks like Alliance should be able to do that. Remember, Wicked did not respond to the play. So that was a 2v4 from Alliance and Shook is the one that gives up his life. Candy Panda stealthed himself up. This is just going to put a lot of damage down. I think Wicked should sustain a whole bunch of uh -oh. candy. The one that's in trouble. Bird is the word. And look at that turnaround. Candy Panda thought he was being a sneaky little rat. Instead, Wicked. Well, he's a big raven. And they pack peck on rats. I think you could say that. They do. They do indeed. They do. No, I focus, focus on their eyes first. I, I haven't seen too many come down, though. I don't know. Maybe it's, it's just a myth. Well, it's a tower, nonetheless. Wicked manages to punish the low-level Candy Panda, forces him very, very low. Tower was secured by Alliance thanks to the, the fact that they actually lane-swapped. But SK again, I think that's now the third time they've tried to look for this very, very specific matchup. And Wicked is already doing much better than the two previous games. He's got a CS advantage over Freddy. And thanks to all of the swapping, Freddy's the one that's being punished. He's, he's not managed to grow any sort of lead like he has in the previous two games. He hasn't branched out too much either. Wicked, of course, miles ahead in CS. He's going to go to the top lane. Can't teleport there. Hasn't got any back available yet, but there's the blue ball for Jezzers. Just, <laughs> just about there. Does manage to secure that one. Froggen in this mid lane. He's actually down on items right now because he hasn't been back to buy. SK getting a lot of vision around this tribush and they want to set up. They want to get this dragon down. Yeah, they really are trying to focus on it. And I, I'm going to compare, again, now the, the, the Kha'Zix jungles. Shook is the one that's now primarily farming. The lane swaps could be playing into it as well. It's quite difficult to go for any sort of invades. We'll finish that in a second. It looks like Dragon's been started. It's going to be finished. Not looking. No one from Alliance is even responding. SK's got good vision this time around. Good timing. Too slow. And yeah, nobody from Alliance there. So maybe either Alliance didn't want to go for it because it looks like they're pushing top. It looks like they're pushing bottom. But at least the objective game balances out as SK grab their first global gold. So SK holds strong. Or oh, Pink Ward on Candy Panda. Oh, he didn't even check in the bush. Thought about stealthing his way in there, but they were already moving towards him. Read that one. Wicked, meanwhile, he's been shoving this top lane out. It's actually unrated as heading his way up there. Candy Panda is going to move his way around, so they really want to keep a 2v1 on him. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I just, I actually, I, this has to be to try by time for Freddy. Freddy's so far behind where he wants to be. Level 6, Wicked's level 7. He does have Catalyst the Protector. Actually, even 23 gold. gold. 
Luckily, thanks to the tower kill, that's playing in his favor, and obviously the fact that he picked up a kill. So that's where it is coming from. The fact of the matter is, Freddy's running scared. Freddy's not being a lane bully. He's not moving, you know, he, he's not confident in his current setup, and, and every single time Wicked goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, he moves away. This so, is dangerous, that's for sure. Tower moved in. As you can see, never move, used out. Jez is having to step away a little bit. Froggen didn't go too aggressive. In fact, never move had a locked him up. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Well, we talked about Freddy running scared. Oh, Charm landing on Jezzers. He's got Sven Skeren, uh, Shook moving, sorry. So used to seeing Sven Skeren on Kha'Zix. Yep. Moving in above him. See whether he goes for it. Freddy already backing away. That means there's a ward coverage. And Shook read that one. Yeah, but I mean, do you see the fear from mm -hmm. Freddy? The moment that wave gets pushed up, he, he looks around the map, realizes people are missing, and he instantly starts backing off, instantly starts moving away. The... The damage of the early game has already been done to Freddy, and he's continuing to fall further behind. Tabs is doing a good job along with Nip of putting tower pressure down. They continue to burn Freddy down. That tower is pretty low, and that could be the second one of the game for Alliance. There's a lot of pressure that SK have not, as of yet, in this best of five, felt from Alliance. They are losing out in the lane phase. They're switching that they are basically forcing themselves into to get Freddy off that. It's actually causing them problems. Svenskeren, he's going to try and sneak in towards his push, have a look towards it. Twisted in vain, onto it. Nif, he read that one. Throws out the death sentence, but does not land. It shook was close by. Ultimate was used by Nif and the flash, but they didn't get a kill. Yeah, all things considered, box, buster shot, and flash out of Nif. That's a very, very good trade. Sven is, is doing some work on Evelyn in the early game, and we're still seeing Shook primarily farm. This is going to be the first time we're really seeing him try to get involved. Yes, he did get first blood along with Froggen. We'll see how this works out. Four versus three. Froggen was moving to the bottom lane, but has opted to move backwards. It's all going to be about the dark binding or Freddy holding someone down long enough. Shook goes aggressive, takes the lantern, pulls Freddy all the way into the tower. He takes a lot of damage. Teleport is still available for Wicked. He's not going to join it, though. Instead, he's free farming in that top lane and another failed gank attempt for SK. Yeah, not, this, not working out this time around. They still hold on to a gold lead. However minute it is, it is still a lead nonetheless. And Froggen is roaming. He was attempting to roam earlier on. There are blue pings on Sven Skeren. So they knew generally where he was, just not exactly. He was spotted out by the pink ward in the river. Well, Freddy actually teleports into Wicked this time around. We'll see how that works out. It seems that he's going to have to back away after all. The bird is too Sven strong. Sven still left bottom lane. Sticking around there, Flash Soul Shackles, Nif will get caught out, Dark Binding goes down, the Rat's on towards it, Candy Panda go get in towards it, Sven Skeren finally gets the kill. It pays off, but it, by God, it took him a long time. Yeah, it really, really does. Uh, Sven may be in a bit of a tough place. Shook is looking for blood. He catches on towards him, gets the unseen threat. Shook has to back away from this now. He's going to have the presence of Froggen coming close, but Candy Panda locks on towards him, does not get him down. Jess is now focused on, he's getting taken down. He has to flash away. Froggen not going to follow through, and SK come out ahead again. Alliance, they're so close to picking up multiple kills, but SK, they're the ones coming out on top. You still cannot deny the explosiveness that Froggen is bringing to the match, though. That's the second time you've seen a super aggressive play on Jezzers, and it's working out. That was very close to Tabs' behind. And he manages to get away, and, you know, just the... The, the ganks from early game Kha'Zix are not particularly strong. We're not seeing either Sven Skeren or Shook really go for the sort of hit early counter jungling, looking to harass their opponents out of the jungle. Um, it's much more difficult against an Evelyn because, of course, it's so much more difficult to track her and find her. But... Once Shook gets some of that armor penetration that we're seeing on this updated build, then I think we'll see him poking around and trying to set Froggen up for some more kills. So, blue ball picked up by Jezzers. See how it works out. Teleport is now down for him, so we'll see whether Shook pays a visit. Wicked and Freddy going back at it, but again, this is actually a much closer fight, remember. Blasting Wand was picked up by Freddy, so he's slightly ahead in his build because Wicked hasn't been back to buy. He's sitting on a stack of gold, just 1,600 gold right now. Pops his ultimate, clears out the wave again. Freddy is starting to win out and do well in this lane, though, so the early advantage slipping away from Wicked. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. I mean, it is still 30 CS at the end of the day, and gold is still even between the two of them thanks to the fact that SK again 
Ooh. They did get that dragon. Now they're jumping on Wicked. They're going for him this time around. Flash is available. Never move goes down. Will he be able to get into the bush and flash across? Yes, he is. And Wicked is away. So successful gank once more from Sven. I also like the fact he sidestepped the never move. Managed to get out of range of it. Wasn't rooted in place, and that applied even more pressure to Wicked. But Wicked's doing a lot better this time around. Going to finish off that Rod of Ages very shortly. And there it is, instantly picked up. Got his teleport to go back to lane if he wants to. Alternatively, Dragon has respawned, so it may be an upcoming Dragon fight. He'll hold on to TP for the time being. Wasted Pink Ward from Candy Panda instantly cleared out and rated well, put himself a Vision Ward in there to uh, get a little bit of presence. Dragon is now back up. Let's go, remember, managed to get on towards that last time around. Spirit Rush. Jez is not charmed out this time, but you can see the burst damage potential. Froggen pulled in. Not the small Spirit Rush. Not used. So he didn't finish off Jezza's, but he does take down that outer turret. Yeah, we did see the charm just go wide, though. Jezza's was able to sidestep that one. No Spirit Rush available for the uh, upcoming team fight, but there's no Shockwave either. And Jez is going to take a long time to get there. They're going oh, on Niff instead. Niff in trouble, flashes into the pit. He's going to get away. He just, no, Poison Tick takes him down. Now the rest of SK move in. Shook taking very low on hit points here. Freddy tries to focus on towards it. Wicked does manage to take down Sven Skur, and that's another one. Dragon going down. Charm lands on Candy Panda. They quickly turn it back around. Wicked really wants to fight this one. Shook goes down in the pit, so it's a two for one. But it's Alliance that come out with a dragon. Two, yeah, 100%. So advantage Alliance, obviously. But... In terms of the fight, I actually think SK probably did the best thing they could have done. Alliance were a little bit split. So Candy Panda and Nif, uh, Candy Panda and Rated, punish Nif for being in the wrong place. But that never move, not only does it catch two members of, uh, of SK Gaming, it prevents Candy Panda from working further forward. It zones his opponents away. And just in full retreat mode, because Froggen had obviously used everything to try kill Jezzes, he wasn't able to punish Candy Panda after landing the charm. I think they could have got a little bit more from that one. Dark Binding does not. Uh, does land. The Death Sentence does not because of N-rated Black Shield. So, what do we have building between these two top laners? They've been going at it toe for toe for a long time. Rod of Ages completed for both. We'll see where they go. I'm thinking Swain probably going to go towards the Abyssal Scepter maybe next with her Wicked. Potentially the Spirit Visage if he wants to just mm. block the MR. Yeah, that's true. You know, from the Evelyn. But we'll see uh, Freddy and Wicked, they are going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Wicked is going to be able to sustain as long as he has mana. That's a key thing to keep our eye on. And we will go back to that. It does look like there's a very big party joining at the bottom lane. Shook got those triple long swords. has yet to complete his Brutalizer, his Hex Drinker. And Tower finally falls. It's been a long time coming, actually, because that was low for a while. Well, considering it's, what, six, seven hundred gold between the two at the moment, that's three towers for Alliance. So there's a lot of money on the table for SK if they were to start pushing these towers. But Alliance have now got the vision advantage. They're taking it away. Wicked and Freddy going at it once again. But next to no money for Freddy this time around. But he's simply buying time. In comes Froggen. Can he land the charm? You bet your life he can. The damage is down and Froggen gets himself the kill. Yeah, it works out in favor of Alliance. Again, it's all about Frog. This game is going to become the Froggen show. This game really is going to become the Froggen show. If SK can deal with Froggen, then they can, you know, get through the rest of the comp. But it's going to be up to Candy Panda and Sven to surprise Froggen, catch him off guard and blow him up super quickly. Blade of the Rune King is completed for Candy Panda. It allowed him to take down that tower in the bottom lane. But we need to see how he's going to roam and, and, and try to set up any, any potential picks. SK slow to react on this one, Alliance. Moving in numbers towards the top. Four members here as they push in towards the tower. Don't think they're going to get too much damage on it. They're already back in. They're expecting SK to react stronger, I think, than the, they already did. And as you mentioned, I think it could well be the Frog and Show. Got himself that DFG. Got himself another needlessly large rod built towards that death gap. It's going to be a big, big power potential. But Candy Panda himself also. Two kills, four assists. Blathering can complete. Already got that Brutalizer on the way to the Yomu's Ghost Blade. He will be a problem. If he can be in the right position. Yes. That's the only key. And we've seen how difficult um, or how frustrating it is for Candy Panda in the fights. Because the moment he does pop his head, uh, you know, head into the fight, Wicked is there, looking to put the laser bird, looking to put the never move down. So 
if Candy Panda gets caught by either the death sentence or by any of the Swain CC, he's instantly going to get focused down. Twitch is so, so easy to kill the moment you hold him in place. So currently, just 400 gold separating these two teams. Tied at one apiece in his best of five semi-finals. If, for some reason, you were not awake earlier on and you missed the Fnatic match, well, you missed a cracker. And mute your screen right now because I'm about to spoil it for you. It was Fnatic that took it three to two. A cracking, cracking best of five. And honestly, you know, we, we talked with obviously Joe and DeFisio as we got up here. Probably the greatest best of five we've seen for a while at Gamescom. Oh, yes. If not at all, in, in talking about all regionals. It's been a long time coming uh, to have such an exciting best of five. And, and, you know, there was a lot to talk about. There was very good plays. There was a lot of mistakes. There was, you know, there's, there's things both teams can walk away from and look at to say, we did this right, we did this wrong. But the most impressive thing was just how both teams dug really, really deep. And while the games have gone on, that was a you know, sort of 80% vote in favor of Alliance. It's slowly, slowly dwindling. SK holding even. 20 minutes in, they're only 300 gold down. They're up in kills. SK is the team that loses laning phase. SK is the team that doesn't, doesn't pull ahead. And while they haven't pulled ahead now, they're holding even with Europe's number one seeded team. Yeah, clear number one as well. It was not too close. Fnatic, the only team that got remotely close to that one. But as we know, Europe, everybody beats everybody else. Even bottom of the table to the top of the table. Copenhagen Wars took Alliance a good run for their money several times. So Alliance, now with the three towers down, Alta, are they going to be able to make any inroads into SK's base? Currently, Dragon is the focus. That's up in 25 seconds. Ooh, Alliance almost caught out of position. Again, Shockwave is the very, very key. If Jezus can get a, a multi-man shockwave, that's how they're going to win these team fights. And Candy Panda needs to assassinate somebody. He needs to get past Wicked and get rid of probably Tabs, if possible, because he's going to be the consistent damage threat. As it, as it stands, SK grouped up. There's a teleport coming in. Let's see, where is Freddy going? He's Little just early. joining. He just wants to be with the team. Mm -hmm. the, the potential delay, and also the, the, the power of Vengeful Maelstrom when a fight breaks out is going to be so impactful as they start to group. So I like the fact he's joined, but he's been hooked. He's going to get hooked in. He's going to go on towards Wicked, though, but he is a bird. Is it the word? He's trying to flash away. He's going to get focused on. A lot of hit points still. Not quite able to take him down. Soul Shackles from M18 does not ping off, and Tabs instead turns it around. Death sentence on Sven's going. Shook pounces and strikes and gets himself the kill. SK 2 to 0 down. They have to back away, but they still have control of the Dragon. There was no shockwave from Jezus. The number of, of low health members in Alliance and no ultimate comes down. Now the teleport was used from Freddy early. A healed up Wicked is going to teleport into the team fight. On the back. He had home guard boots, but a well-timed sapling instantly mitigates that movement speed. Uh, again, same story. Candy Panda needs to stealth up, and if Jezus lands a good Shockwave, they can still win this fight despite being down in numbers. Oh, never move lands. Jezus gets caught out. He's going to be focused. Death sentence follows. He gets hooked in. Shook gets himself in towards it. Gets the reset. Jumps on Candy Panda. Freddy and Je uh, Froggen going at it just around the side there. Froggen will win out that fight. And again, this time a two for two. But the Dragon, I believe, went to Alliance. Yeah, I think they secured that one too. And just very, very well played by Alliance. They punish SK for sticking around. They did go two for two, of course, because of the fact everybody was low. And I think Jesus did get the shockwave animation off. We'll watch it in just a second. But Death Sentence connects onto Jezus. In and amongst the Maelstrom. Ah, oh, this is the first fight. So, Alliance on the back foot, they managed to peel away. The, the nicest thing about what Alliance did in this fight is they split up in a line. So because they made it nearly impossible for a multi-man shockwave, Jezus held the trigger. And that allowed Alliance to win the fight. And that then set them up for the Dragon. So this is now where SK re-engage. Also, I really like uh, the sapling toss from Freddy. It instantly mitigated Freddy's movement speed. And that was the shockwave. Early on, allowed them to get a couple of kills. But truthfully, SK always at a disadvantage. They needed a perfect shockwave to win the fight. It wasn't. They ate too many uh, uh, skill shots. And come away worse for wear. So advantage now in Alliance's favor. And they have truthfully looked better in this game than they have in the last two. Blue buff's going to be taken. Shook will clean that one out. Not too sure.
sure whether they've gifted to Frog and yet they feel safe enough to do that. So, talked about the inroads into towers. This is the time to make them Dragon now off the table, but they need to get some waves going for them, which is why we see Froggen down the bottom. And actually, SK moving on force. Five members pushing towards this one. Nifgaard protected. The rest of Alliance are nearby. Never move will go down. Wicked pops that ultimate to try and clear the wave out quickly. He will, and they hold the tower. Yeah, pretty good wave clear on the side of Alliance. I think thanks to the fact that they've got that never move, they've got Ari, they've got the splash damage from Tristana. She's actually gone for a Phantom Dance as opposed to Static Ship. So, Slightly different itemization to what we're used to seeing. And I think it's going to work out because Tabs, once he gets that very long range, he can just sit and poke and poke and poke, looking for those critical hits. Alliance grouped up, they're going to siege another tower, and SK are very slow to respond. They're going to get on towards the tower, they should take it down here. And SK, pretty slow to defend that one, they needed the wave to come in, but that turret is... Not far in this one. Candy Panda, he's on his way back. Svenskern flanking around the side. Shockwave catches three members. Alliance in trouble. Freddy kicked away from this one. Wicked's going to get taken down. Jezus gets the kill on him. Now Frog in focus. He has to flash away. Spirit Rush available. Shock goes in, gets the reset, leaps away. And he's gone. Scott free. And suddenly, it comes out of two for two. Yeah, two for two with both supports and top laners going down. Fantastic Shockwave from Jezus. Almost takes tabs out. But Nif had a near perfect box. The walls were hit by multiple members of SK and uh, Sven Skiro was unable to chase him down. Oh, that's a flash from Sven. Oh, he's going deep on this one. I'm not too sure if he's going to get it. He's going to turn it around. No, Shock gets it. Wow. And gets the reset. Pounces away. Thank you very much, Free Kill. I think Sven voluntarily opted into the isolation damage by running past the minion wave and into the turret. Shook just burst him down. Brutalizer Hex Drinker. Gonna be enough. And you see, as soon as those items are picked up, Shook becomes a lot more relevant. Much like the previous uh, previous performances on Kha'Zix. Aggressive move from Tabs there, but it did scare Jezus away. Yeah, it went pouncing for it. Wicked this time. He's getting the blue wolf. That's actually gonna work out very well for him. Pretty mana hungry, Swain, if you don't get the, uh, the right ultimate working in your favor on the minion wave. So, he will eventually pick it up. Soon, someday. Somewhere. Oh, he's stalling it. Maybe he's going to be giving it to Froggen. Let's see. Yes, he is. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Or is he giving it to Shook? No, oh, wait, Froggen. let's watch Blue Buff kick him in the head again. Yes. Oh, it punched him. <laughs> <laughs> good guy, good guy Wicked. Good guy Wicked. He's a big and, Danish fellow. He can and take you know a couple what? of kicks. For all, for all the criticism we did give him for game one and two, this is a much better performance. Uh, he, yes. He's landing the skill shots with his never move. He's in the right place at the right time. He's tanking appropriately. Despite the fact that he was so heavily focused in that previous Dragon engagement, he still got away with his life, teleported in, and still like re-tanked up on the front line. So this is a much, much stronger game from Alliance's top laner. And it feels like he's more practiced on Swain than he was on Maokai or Alistair. But we can see the battle between Freddy and Wicked is actually pretty tight right now. And with Candy Panda trying to tip the scales, and Sven Skurin making a move off the side, it's time for Wicked to make tracks, and he is rightfully backing away. But look at Alliance. They're reacting. They are shoving strong up this mid lane. We've got Froggen off the side. The question is, will SK back off? Oh, I don't really know. This is going to be another tower for Alliance at the very least. SK continuing the push. They do have a lot of attack speed with Twitch, but the problem is Tristan has got an Infinity Edge and a Phantom Dancer and Rapid Fire. So the trade is two towers for two. But you're comparing, oh, the Shockwave, I think, is looking from Jezus. He did use it, uh, didn't connect too, too well, though. So, two towers for Oh, one. but look at the back. Here comes SK. SK are looking for a fight. Oh, and they're going to find it because Wicked comes in. Good capture of Svenskeren, but he's going to do quickly here. Nif going to get focused down. It's going to be a jungler for a support so far. Wicked has to flash out of there. Takes a lot of poison damage. And actually, I think SK came out on top in that one. If only the, the Shockwave had been used in that fight, what a difference it could have been. Candy Panda was in a pretty good position, was laying down a lot of damage. They don't have the most amount of minions to work with. Ooh. Freddy actually gets caught by the root. No Spirit Rush for Froggen, so he can't really look to just pop in and pop out with a kill. But I think smart-ish play. The, the teams end up trading two towers for two. But that was a very, very good engage from Sven Skeren. He got a massive shield from the Agony's Embrace. But unfortunately, he doesn't have the most armor. He's got a, a lot of hit points, but not enough armor, and, and just got melted there. 
by Tabs as Tristana. But it does allow SK some positioning. And they take the second track. So Dragon's two apiece, and it's still only a 2,000 game. 2,000 gold game. Yeah, so objective is still being picked up, and these team fights are getting tighter. Both teams coming out really evenly, honestly. It's been two for two a couple of times. Towers are still in Alliance's favor, but only just. Those two inners in the mid and bottom could open up a lot for Alliance. Of course, a lot of vision required from both teams. Not a lot of wards all gathered around that mid lane area, so not a great deal covering out the jungle. So I think that will be the focus for the next minute or two for both of these teams. It, it feels like Alliance is dictating the tempo of the game. Despite the fact the lead is very small, you know, even on kills, there's one tower that separates them. It's Alliance that's making more positive moves, and when SK is somewhat out of position, Alliance have been able to punish them. You know, SK got a, a bunch of kills early on and had the advantage in that regard. But as the game is progressing, as Tabs is getting more and more damage, and as Shook is able to sort of look to assassinate people, um, Alliance are now finding the situations that they can win. I do think if Alliance keep this up, they can probably close the game out. The only thing that they have to avoid is, is the, the AoE team fights from Jezzers, from Shockwave. And if they peel properly, you know, form the line, it'll work in their favor. Well, wicked shoving hard, wanted to try and force something out of that mid lane. Blue buff was not there, which is why Frog and appealed away. So no objectives are open for them. I think they want to try and make a pick. They want to try and pick something off. Frogan's continuing to just keep shoving that wave down the side. And bang on 30 minutes. We get ourselves a ball as well. I'll call it 31. Yeah, I think just, just gonna be I'm going to call it 30.59. Oh, well played indeed. So, looks like it is Candy Panda. With the pause, I'm not too sure actually. No, it's Alliance, I'm pretty sure. The we'll find out shortly. I'm ref's sure. not going too close to those. We're so, the, the thing about this game, actually the thing about this series, it, it has been slower, it has been more tactical. And I think it's been more about really punishing your opponent's decisions and mistakes rather than running away with the game. You know, in the previous game, SK did have an advantage. They earned that, they played positively. But, but Alliance never really committed to fights. Alliance never really grouped. And SK punished them for that. Kept taking objectives, kept scaring them away. So how... How do these teams play this game? It's just safer, it's just slower. I think Wicked found something in the desk, maybe nibbling away at his toes. <laughs> it's just an audio issue, ladies and gentlemen. He's just sorting out his uh, headset, so that's just being plugged in, not too sure. Bit of bouncing. Yeah, that's, that's the new headset as they're working through it. Look at the gold unspent. Mm. The two teams. Uh, 2K plus sat on to uh, tabs. And the big, the big CS deficit that Freddy was struggling from has also been closed as the game has progressed. But every other lane, with the exception of the AD carry, is very even. A 70 CS lead for tabs is very, very big, but it doesn't equate to a whole lot. It's only six or 700 gold. Thanks to the dragons, thanks to the towers. Uh, objectives have been very even between these two teams. It's, a it's kind of a weird game to talk about because SK have roamed, they had a lot of kills and picks, but it didn't really lead to map control. And Alliance have found the team fights, but they've kind of got the makings of a, a pick comp in, this, in, in, in their champions. It's down to the point there where whoever loses out big in the next team fight, which potentially at this point, maybe a Dragon or Baron, is going to take an inhibitor. Whether they'll take the game, it's respawn time is still fairly short at 31 minutes. I don't think it's going to be quite the game, but. Absolutely. As I mentioned at the start, this is going to be a 50-minute game, and it's going to be a very tight 50-minute game. At that, 11-11 in kills, 2,000 gold differential. This could still go either way. It's a case of who can pick off, and I'm really interested to see how this Swain Maokai is going to swing, yep. because it was clearly Wicked that had the advantage. It was clearly SK that were desperate to get Freddy off on his own. Yep. And now that Freddy is kind of back... I guess you could say, and has been aggressive, the more aggressive actually than Wicked. I wonder if Wicked's going to fall away from this one because I know we were privileged to a conversation between Wicked and Frogger talking about this exact matchup and talking about how we would scale. Wicked believed Swain would 
fall away, but Froggen was absolutely insistent, and Wickens listened to his captain. He's practiced and tried, and of course now he's pulling out Swain. We saw Soaz doing the same earlier on, so clearly there's something in this pick that everybody sees that works wonders. So you could argue the differences, but they both end up just being these like super beefy, sort of sustained tanks. Swain will be healing himself through his ultimate, whereas Michael will be reducing the damage in both ways, just extending the survivability in team fights. But the biggest key for me is how Wicked lands the Never Moves. It is an AoE route, whereas Marco has only got a single target. And when you've got champions like Evelyn and Twitch, who need to be moving, who need to be positioning correctly, if they get locked down, they die. And on the topic of the AD carries, Tabs on Tristana is so far ahead of Candy Panda, and he's going to eight out scale Twitch, thanks to the extent of range and the safety. If Tabs is not dealt with in team fights, he's going to be able to just clean house. And while you've got to worry about Swain healing and you've got to worry about Tabs, you've also got to avoid Froggen, who's spirit rushing in and trying to charm you and kill you. So there's a lot of threats on the side of Alliance that the very immobile side of SK has to overcome. So if they're ever jumped on top of and they're not ready, all of those threats and all the mobility and, and whatnot on the side of Alliance uh, plays very heavily into their favor. And something, you know, that has been pretty big for the fact that while SK have got 11 kills, six of them are on Nif. Yep. Still, untouched, Froggen and Tabs yet to die. Tabs, remember, went 10-0-8 in game one. So could he get away with it again? At the moment, they are the guys that need to be focused, and if they're not getting near them, it may well be a problem for SK because they are the big damage dealers. They are the big threats. Support's going down. Let's not know. the end of the yep. world. It is a problem for all supports of the world. <laughs> but it's not the end of the team fight, that's for sure. Yeah, the, the advantage, of course, to Froggen and Tabs going unkilled thus far is that when they do eventually get killed, they will give up bounty gold. So that can help SK close this gap. Help SK. Not that 2,030 minutes is really sizable. I mean, uh, I, I'm overhamming that one just a little bit. In my opinion, SK have to catch Alliance a little bit off guard. SK have to just try, jump on Shook or Froggen or Tabs with the Twitch Oriana combo, kill them, and then allow Maokai and Evelyn to try run down the rest. Well, Froggen is gonna continue to keep this wave pushed in while SK, they may try and take advantage. The fact that he's out of position, they're gonna push in. Remember, there's an inhibitor that he's pushing towards though, as opposed to that inner tower. This is not a good response from Alliance though. They are now moving around. SK instead are going to choose to they might try rush it. the Baron. Well, Candy Panda's going in. He's going to go for the attack speed. They are rushing it. While, on the, while this is happening, the inhibitor is being pushed in by Froggen. This is going to be one of those potential scenarios where they're going to trade an inhibitor for Baron. Actually, no. Uh, SK should be able to recall. There was no vision from Alliance in the pit at all. So the rest of Alliance may be realizing that they've made a mistake. Are just trying to push the waves up as quickly and as heavily as they can. Froggen's dealing a lot of damage to the inhib. If he sticks it, around, I think Lantern. he might. I, I think he might. He's got damage. Oh, he needed to stick oh. around a few more hits. I think it would have been worth it. One death to get super minions, and now your opponents have all got Baron. SK completely sneak it. At the beginning of the day, we talked about Barons. We said that SK have not made the best Baron calls in the league. They've actually secured the sixth lowest number of Barons across their 28 games. But in this matchup, they made the right call. Very, very smart. Well, we'll see how it works out. We'll see whether that Baron gets put to good use. It's all well and good getting the Baron if they want Frog and get objectives from it. It's going to be very hard to pin down. Flash and Spirit Rush available. They're not going to be able to catch him. Yes, not with, not with those kind of dark bindings. Oh. <laughs> Definitely optimistic. Frog and able just to walk away. Um, but yeah, well played to SK. They sneak the objective, completely catching Alliance with their pants around their ankles. They weren't able to get in range. They didn't even have the vision. So they probably realized too late and then just said, let's, let's do the best that we can. With Baron up Ooh. and the fact that SK can look Oh, he it. It's going to get focused on not enough, though. The charm doesn't land. Froggen was waiting for that. That was the target he wanted. Spirit Rush was used. Nif takes a fair burst of damage, more than N-rated took, who was, of course, regenerating as well with that Baron buff. Froggen's running back to base. We'll see how SK siege this one out. Both teams have got Single target snares and roots and uh, single target crowd control is the word I'm looking for. And as long as SK don't get caught by never moves, I think they actually can siege fairly well. Use the Jez's ball to zone appropriately. 
reduce the threat of members of Alliance. Oh. Don't eat death sentences. That would be a good start. But Freddy, he started the dive. Oh, lands and pulls him out of danger. They've got such good wave there. They've got Tabs now, who's up to level 15. Phantom down to Infinity Edge, Blade the Room King. He'll just blow those minions to pieces. They really need to get something meaningful to try and pick someone off. Again, Shook him with a massive chunk of damage as well. He can just void spike onto the minions. Let's see if they can get another couple of hits onto this tower. As of yet, they have not put a single dent in. So in the bottom lane, SK Gaming's wave is working for them. If that manages to get to the inner turret, they can peel away and take that tower. In the top lane, it is working against them. So Alliance will be able to potentially teleport up there if they win a team fight and send Frog in that direction. SK have got options. There's still a thousand gold down, but they have Baron for a few more minutes, so they can continue the siege. Despite the death sentences connecting, it's onto Sven Skeren and Freddy, which is not the targets you're looking for. Not again. Wiki just pops that ultimate. Oh! Rapid right attack, attack coming out of Candy Panda. No target found. Alliance get taken low-ish on hit points, but certainly not enough. They're going to rotate down towards the inner turret. They will take that objective. So they're going to get something for this Baron, but inhibitor turret versus an inner turret so far. Teleport from Wicked. He's going in. They're going to defend it. It looks like they're going for a fight. Wicked's been rooted in Whoa. place, and he's going to die. Well, that was good. <laughs> that was a great teleport. Just focus down. No, but again, nobody else from Alliance engaged, right? Wicked jumped in and he wanted to defend the tower, but nobody else from Alliance moved in. Despite the fact Frogan was caught by the Dark Binding, Nobody else engaged. Top turret's taking a hell of a beating from minions right now, that inner turret. So, so far, this could well be an inner for an inner. But there's 30 second death timer on Wicked. So if SK continue the push. Flash. Oh, that was, he flashed the back. flashes out of it. Freddy, though, gonna push in. They got a minion wave in there. Niv goes in, gets the flay down. Is he gonna get dropped? Yes, he will. SK, move in. Inhibitor turret goes down. Now they're gonna get something from this. Inhibitor will fall. And Alliance finally pay the price. That was a very, very good play. Jezus finally lands the shockwave, uh, uh, forces the flash by trying to land the shockwave. And it was all set up by Freddy. Freddy rooted the targets down. SK sim simply focused whoever they wanted to. And Freddy's tanky enough to be relevant. We talked about the differences between the Swain and the Maokai. Well, Maokai proved himself superior in the last couple of minutes. But on the same token, Wicked was sort of left out to dry. He teleported into that tower. Instantly got rooted in place, and Alliance were like, uh, sorry, buddy, we can't really do a whole lot for you. Yeah, it's not worked out too well for them. So, three out of five, Dragons, one out of one, Baron. Big minion and wave in the top's gonna get cleared out, Freddy. No problem with that one. Blue buff is available for Jez as well. First time he's had that in a while. So, SK back on top. This game swinging back and forward throughout this matchup pendulum effect and again it's going to be down to another big team fight and possibly a baron play in two minutes time yeah i really want to just comment on how jesus was moving through the jungle he was going for the blue buff and using that command attack just to scout using it for vision only moving forward once he had the vision uh that's actually very smart play and, and worked in the effect it's exactly what millennium did not do uh a couple days ago and you know got punished for being out of position when they lost control of their their, their jungle so sk Baron worn off a minute and a half before the next one's up. They've got super minions in the bottom lane. Do they want to use super minions to siege or do they want to get Baron and then siege? They only were confident enough to siege once they had Baron back. So let's see how it works out. So it's going. Pushing forward the whole of Alliance. Gonna get found out here. Shook can just leap away. Pretty safe play from him there. So and simply just got some basic attacks. Yeah, it's been a lot more tanky since the last time those yeah. two met. You know, Shook had so much damage and was looking to, to pop people Ooh, off. Wicked's going to show himself down the bottom. No teleport available. He's going to clear out this wave, though, and that's going to push it back in Alliance's favor. And that Baron's not up for another 40 seconds, so he's got time to get back up here before it spawns. Yeah, I think they'll be aware of that fact. Um, Tell all he's got super minions against them, so he's not yeah, going to push it in his that's, own favor. That's the problem. Like, but that's why you need to have somebody dealing with him. Uh, interesting to... Oh, left the gold for tabs. Um, you have to keep that wave pushed out. So, ideally, Alliance want to stall until Wicked's got his teleport. Then leave Wicked to continue to push out the super minions, keep them out of your base. And then if or when that Baron engage starts, you can then immediately just teleport straight back up. So. But because it's so close, they can't do that yet. 
Well, Blue Buff was stolen away from Frog and who only has 12.5 cooldown reduction, so he really needs that Blue Buff to get that charm off Alliance. No Entatively beat. stepping in there. Death push set up. Wicked caught in the dark binding. Lantern is out there. Will he be able to take it? Yes, he will. Charm from Frog and only on towards Freddy. So let's go and take it very low off the side there. But Wicked was picked off. Jungler for top lane so far. Nif does land the death sentence on our rating, but they don't follow through. Spirit Rush used by Froggen to get out of there. Super Minions now on the Nexus. Alliance need to get back and defend this one. There's also a gigantic minion wave coming in the top lane. Everything thrown in. Shockwave whiffed. And SK will step away. Look at Tapso. He fancies it. Couple of basic shots. They are hurting Freddy. Yeah, but the thing is, the longer SK can keep down. Alliance here, the more objectives the Super Minions can take. Somebody from Alliance has to go back and deal with it. Are SK going to decide to rush this Baron, uh, Baron down? There is a teleport on Freddy if he needs to jump into the fight. The, the key for, for SK was not being in position where Tabs could auto attack. Not being in a place where Tabs could take him down. Shook may try attempt to steal, but this is going to be so, so hard. Baron at number two coming up for SK, unless Shook can pull off some miracle. Jez is running interference, gets on towards him. Good damage, actually, from Shook. Again, stealths up. Oh, he's going to try and go for it. No, can't get close enough. This is going to be Baron. Nif comes in, tries to throw out the lantern, tries to pull him in there. Not going to get the miracle smite that he needs. Instead, he's going to get the damage down. Will he get on end rated? Will he get the reset? No, he will not. Jez turns it around. Freddy Lowe, though, he's going to get dropped out here. Can Alliance pick up some kills? It's a one for one trade. Jez is hooked in. He goes down into double. Coming in for taps. Gets another. Gets on the triple. Now they can push. They've got the bottom lane exposed. They may be able to run straight for it. There is a minute on the death time as Alliance have got so much damage in tabs. The moment he is allowed to right click targets, people die. The reason that Alliance won, lost the previous team fight before the Baron was because he was zoned away. Alliance were in full retreat. Once Tabs plants himself down, he melted through every single member of SK Gaming. And I was obviously off the back of that team fight. They're going for the inhibitor as well. They may just try and finish the game here. 30 seconds still going. They're going to push in. Inhibitor goes down. Minion Wave still with them. Can Alliance just follow on through? One Nexus to it will be something they can pick up. Maybe able to get two out of it as well. Or entirely the game. But no, Svenskeren comes in, throws down his ultimate. Nexus to it, number one falls. Svenskeren running interference. They do not care. They continue pounding away. Nexus to it, number two goes down. Nif flashes for it, they go for the Nexus. Taps has got the damage, Alliance will take it. Game number two under the belt. Wow, close, close stuff between these two good teams. This honestly is teetering on the edge and anyone could have taken that match. It turns out the Baron was not the right play and Alliance come out victorious. We called out SK at the beginning of the game, at the beginning of the day, talking about Barons, talking about how they're not particularly strong. They make those mistakes. The first Baron was so good, was so sneaky. Second Baron literally cost the match. They secured it, got killed in the pit, and Tabs just romped through SK Gaming's base. Whoever makes the bigger mistake is, is losing these games. This is a very, very tight best of five. Yep. Once again,